Today's episode of the Wildcats Roundup is only made possible by Team Steve Lamani at Realty One Group. Team Steve Lamani at Realty One Group offers unparalleled knowledge of the Westmoreland real estate market. Whether you're a first-time buyer or a seasoned seller, Steve Lamani at Realty One Group is here to guide you every step of the way. Give the team a call at 724-972-1543 or via email at steve at teamlamani.com. Thank you, Steve Lamani, for your generous support of the Wildcats Network. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Wildcats Roundup here on the Wildcats Network YouTube channel. I'm Richard Hillig alongside with Tristan Borland, and we come to you from the Wildcats store here at Greater Latrobe Senior High School. The Wildcats store, your den, starts here. And Tristan, it is basketball season finally here at Greater Latrobe. Uh, and last year for the Lady Wildcats was one in which this team coming in had a lot of questions that started the season, but at the end of the season, it left off with a lot of intrigue. No, you're absolutely right, Richard. I mean, last season when we were talking about this, and it's crazy to think that this was a year ago, that we were here at this store talking about the Lay Wildcats season once again, but we're back. And I think what's really interesting about the Lay Wildcats team this year is that they found something that is really important for a team when they start out the year, and that's an identity. Last year, Lay Wildcats proved through the coaching via Coach Livingston, the fact that the Lay Wildcats are physical. They play a tough, hard defense. They get physical underneath the net, inside the paint. And I think we're gonna see that continue based on what we've been seeing in practice. These Lay Wildcats are ready to play some physical basketball. Well, last year for the Lady Wildcats definitely had a roller coaster type of feel, to say the least. At the start of 2023, the Lady Wildcats won their second consecutive River Valley tip off tournament, but then after that, proceeded to lose six straight games. Their skid would end in the final days before the calendar turned to 2024 with a 52 to 45 win over Plum, and then would proceed to go 8 and 5 the rest of the way to be the number 12 seed in the 5A playoffs. However, the Lady Wildcats for the second year in a row were one and done in the playoffs despite a Herculean comeback effort in the second half against the Armstrong Lady Riverhawks. And with that loss, it marked the end of five Lady Wildcat careers in Addison Toy, Sammy Cronenwetter, Kayla Williams, Bell Blossy, and most notably, Ellie Snyder. And while losing several starters from last year will be a challenge for the Lady Wildcats this year, I think if there's anything to take away from last year's season, it is that if there is a challenge, Mackenzie Livingston will face it head on. Absolutely, and I think that's really awesome that Lee Wildcats were able to find a diamond in the rough like that. I mean, you know, whenever you come in, there's a lot of questions of can you handle the job? I mean, she had never been a head coach before. She was an assistant coach leading up to last season, but I think Coach Livingston has proven to everyone that she is ready for this role. She is not afraid to be a head coach. For me, I know that a lot of questions are about, you know, what's Coach Livingston gonna do and stuff like that, but what really intrigued me, Richard, is what you're talking about with all those seniors who are graduating. I mean, it's just the nature of high school sports you will lose your top talent to graduation and you always got to find that next person up so with ellie snyder and all the other talent that was around her that graduated richard who is the player that's going to step up this year and be a really big factor in my opinion i think it's going to be carly burke and you mentioned uh, Ellie Snyder. They will have to replace her fantastic efforts that she had last year. She broke the program record for most double doubles in a season. She hit the 1,000 point mark for the seventh time as a Lady Wildcat and really cemented her legacy, not just as a fantastic basketball player uh, in the girls program, really just cemented herself and her legacy here at Greater Latrobe to walk the halls as one of the best basketball players here at Greater Latrobe. But you touched on it. If there's an idea for replicating that production, it will be through the duo of Carly Burke and Maggie Myers. No, absolutely. And I think, and this all this game always stands out to me, how big of an impact Maggie Myers was whenever Hemfield came here to the den and she put on a show. I can't name her stats off the top of my head, but I do distinctly remember not only the Latro Bulletin writing about her, but the Trib HSSN as well, writing big stories praising Maggie Myers for her efforts in the game against Hemfield. So I'm very excited to see what she's going to be able to do this year. And you're right, Richard. And I, isn't it interesting at least for my time. I haven't been around here for as long as you have, Richard. But isn't it interesting how every year there seems to be at least one or two stars that really define the program itself? I mean, you even went to school with some of those girls. Yeah, it's it's truly remarkable <laughs> if, you think, if you think about it. Just the amount of talent that they're able to produce on a year-to-year -year basis. Well, year number one, Mackenzie Livingston got the Lady Wildcats back to the playoffs in 2024. What does year number two have in store? We'll find out from head coach Mackenzie Livingston on the Wildcats Roundup next. Folks, thanks for joining us here on the Wildcats Network for episode number 11 of the Wildcats Roundup. Tristan Borland here alongside King Richard Hillwig. 
and also your 2023 to 2024 with your 5A Section 3 Coach of the Year, Coach McKenzie Livingston. Coach, first of all, thank you for taking so much time out of your day to speak with us here on the Wildcats Network. It is truly a, pr a pleasure. But before we talk about your players and kind of the season that you have co coming up, how about that new gym, that project that they worked over during the summer and the fall, you now finally get to play in and hopefully get to christen it with some pretty awesome girls basketball. Yeah, no, first I want to thank you guys. I mean, you do a phenomenal job. You know, this Wildcat Network is just, it's amazing. So thank you, first of all. Uh, but no, that gym, I mean, as soon as we could get in there, the girls were itching to get in there, myself included. They did a phenomenal job. The floor looks great. Super, super excited to get in there. The last time we talked, uh, the new section was just announced uh, back in, I believe that was June. Uh, what have you done from that point to now to kind of really get you guys going here in the month of November to get things going once December hits? Believe it or not, we actually um, got Indiana in our section. And so we've been in their summer league, we've been in their fall league. Um, so kind of getting familiar with some of our competitors already. Um, so that's been kind of something nice that we were able to do, you know, seeing the section early on. Um, but the girls have been going nonstop, so yep, getting ready. So after your first season, where you went six and six in the section, eleven and twelve <clears throat> overall, and being able to make it into the playoffs as the 12th seed, losing to Armstrong on the road, you know, a very long and interesting first year. But now your first year is behind you, yes. and you have you're now heading into your second season, coach. What do you feel you have learned not only about this team but about a lot of the players that you're going to go into your second year with? Yeah, so it's nice to actually know the girls' names. <laughs> during the summer league this year. Last year I didn't know, I was like number 12, get in there, number. So it's nice actually knowing, you know, the skill work going into this summer league um, and just how dedicated this team is. 14 to 15 girls showing up on a daily basis has really, really helped us out. We just talked about your last year where mm -hmm. you were blessed with a lot of very talented girls basketball players. Mm -hmm. Just to name a few, Ellie Snyder, who is a true standout, Queen Bell Blossy, who's now gone, uh, Addison Toy is also gone. A lot of really big name players for your team that really kind of, I would even argue, anchored and kind of gave the characteristics mm -hmm. of your team last year. They're gone though. I mean, that's one of the things about high school sports. Every single year, your seniors will graduate and you got to find a way to kind of fill them in. How are you doing that this year now that you have so many talented seniors that have walked out the door? Yeah, I mean, we did. We lost a great group of girls. Um, those girls were truly leaders. Um, but I will say <clears throat> right off the bat, I had girls coming into my office right as the season ended. They're ready to take those leadership roles. But we got Carly Burke, you know, she's played for, you know, at least two or three years now started multiple games. She's ready to take that role. Bradley Bodner, also a senior, very vocal leader that we're gonna have coming in. We've got some juniors, even some sophomores, um, like Emery Bridge, Maggie Myers, ready to take those leadership roles. You also have some players that have transferred over yes. from other schools. Are yes. you excited to be able to plug them in and really use your team to its fullest potential? Yes, we got Lindsay Gassy coming from Ligonier. She was kind of a leader for them. So bringing her into this um, environment, I think has, has really helped us out as well. So I think that's gonna help, um, you know, kind of manage things on the floor with her experience. Two names you mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, Carly Burke and Maggie Myers. That yes. duo really came onto the scene uh, at the end of last year with Carly's ability as, a, yes. as kind of a defensive you know, anchor yes. and her ability to pass the ball. Maggie with her ability off the screens as well. Uh, how much are you expecting from that duo to, I guess in a sense, carry the load of expectations mm -hmm. this year? Yeah, no, I mean, just, I mean, Carly just got done with cross country and Maggie just got done with volleyball. But we had a shootout at Hempfield and, the, and those two's connection um, already off off the bat was was amazing. The pick and rolls with those two. Um, so you're gonna see a lot out of them. Carly's vision, um, not just with Maggie, with you know everybody else on the court. It's it's pretty incredible to see and her kind of being our main point guard this year um, instead of sharing the role with Bell. Um, you're gonna see a lot more really good passes out of her. Now, of course, we can talk ad nauseum about all the talents of players that you're going to be coming with this year, Coach, but it's always important to have a coach that can take players and use them to their fullest abilities. <clears throat> we mentioned that a lot of people, not just us here on the Wildcast Network, but even the fine folks over at the Trib have mentioned that you have made a strong, ironclad defense your entire identity. Mm -hmm. Is that going to be another thing that we're going to see this year? And what are you doing right now in practices to get your defense ready to be kind of the... Uh, the brick house for your entire team. Yeah, no, I will always, till the day I stop coaching, we'll stress defense. Um, and our first half of practice just, you know, today, 
was all defense. Shell, everything, you know, man to man. And with the team I have this year, we should be able to full court press with the guards that we have the whole game. We have so many skilled guards this year, have the ability, and I am, you know, confident in to play that kind of defense. Like I said, defense will always be the key. One thing about the new realignments in 5A is that it makes your section maybe one of the best, but it also makes it a very competitive this year. Yes. Uh, as far as expecting and kind of preparing for that competitive nature, does it kind of, you know, feel good that you got that taste last year where literally last day of the year uh, you, you got in? Yeah, um, yeah, definitely coming in my first year, not knowing the Whippeo, you know, since I came from the Heritage Conference, I was kind of thrown into a really, really good section um, with Oakland Catholic, Penn Trafford, McKeesport. This year, same thing. We got Penn Trafford, Indiana also won their section last year. Um, so I think the girls kind of understand, hey, we got to we gotta work year round pretty much just like everybody else if we want to be at that standard um, of the Whippeo sections that we seem to, you know, get. How important will the next two weeks be for your team as you prepare for the beginning weeks of December where it wasn't necessarily pretty last year in December, but how important it will it be to try and hit the ground running right away now? Yeah, so we got two tip-off tournaments. You know, our first one starting in November. I don't know if I've ever played a game in November um, in the years past, so they gotta, they gotta get things going quickly here. That's what I've been stressing to them. Um, we've gotta hit the ground running soon. So these scrimmages coming up are very critical. We've got to be sharp from the jump. And if our offense isn't flowing or they're not, you know, used to playing some of them with each other right off the bat, that's where defense comes in. Get the stops. If they got to be ugly wins right off the bat, low scoring games, that's fine. So. A win's a win's a win, exactly. right? Exactly. <laughs> now, Coach, the last question that we have yes. for you for our roundup today. Now, this question is going to be a little bit biased, and I think yes. you kind of touched on it before we got started. For you as a coach, and not just as a coach, but as a fan of the mm -hmm. black and orange, what does it mean to you to have a team like the Wildcats Network that covers, we don't cover all your games, but we cover as many as we possibly can, and we do it to the best of our ability every single night. What does that mean to you to, I'm sure you hear parents talk all the time about, oh, we couldn't make it to the game, but we could at least watch it. I mean, honestly, this, this network is phenomenal. Like I said, um, not only, I mean, I have family out of state, so does my you know, coaching staff, so does my um, players. So just for them to see the atmosphere, you know, the girls, they can see game by game. And you know, these kind of interviews you do with not only me, but the players as well, spreads positive culture, good things. Well, Coach, uh, for me and Tristan, thank you for doing this uh, this afternoon. Uh, and with that, this wraps up another episode of Wildcats Roundup. Thank you for watching. Please make sure to follow all of our socials for the latest regarding Greater Latrobe Athletics. Thank you. Come to the games. <laughs> <laughs>